we've just been doing for about two weeks and it's in Arabic. So we're going to go ahead and use the music to make sure that we're cutting the text as clear as possible. Thank you. 
Excellent job. So you're performing that with Choral Arts Northwest, right? When? Uh, 19. 19th. February, February, March. March, what month are we in? March 19th. Um, and have you worked with Tim yet on it? One time, yeah. One time, okay. <laughs> Great, awesome. I uh, did a wonderful job. I wanna start with all of us and then maybe work backwards, okay? Um, and I want to maybe take it a step further and give you a little permission in this piece and then Ms. Rowley or, or, or Tim can you know, walk you back on it. But I want you to remember that this is a piece of theater, this whole work. Um, and have you seen the whole work or heard the whole work? Do you, not yet? You will, okay, great. Um, yeah, so this is, it's a really powerful moment in the, in the oratorio itself. It's kind of this closing gesture here. And I think we have to reconsider our role as choral singers in it and think of ourselves more as actors on the stage, okay? So how many of you have done musicals at some point? Okay, so we've got enough actors on the stage. Any, any non-musical actors, straight productions and things? Great, all right, fabulous. Um, so when we're on the stage and we are given a text, our job is to then deliver that text to the audience, but not only deliver the text, but show in our physical being some meaning that is ascribed to that text, okay? So, um, can I ask you to start this again um, and think of yourselves as music theater. Think of yourselves as the lead star in a musical production as you sing, okay? She's still going to conduct, but I'm giving you permission to look beyond that, okay? And play to the audience, okay? Think about that text. Think about how you would deliver those words if you were the lead in the production. Let's see how it changes what you do. I'm hearing different things, okay? Um, I'm hearing that you're, the question that you ask, what's the text there? What could be the song? Yeah, it was, it was delivered as a question then, rather than what could be the song where, you hear the difference? What could be the song? And then you're, it's the next question, okay? Um, let me challenge you a bit further. I appreciate the fact that you're getting your bodies involved in it. But if you were on the stage in a musical and the introduction started, would you start doing this? No, you wouldn't. Because you, as the person in the musical, doesn't hear that. You're the character on the stage. You're about to deliver your message in song, but you don't hear that. So when this begins, can you be in character and tell me what those questions mean for you and what the text coming up means for you? Try that. better um, because I, it, there's this moment and I saw it in some of your faces you were thinking you were contemplating and then you asked the question and this there's a progression in these four or five six bars that you know these questions are insistent and then there's a resolve and a purpose for you you going through now in the middle of this have you heard any of Craig Hella Johnson's other pieces what he does Okay, so, I mean, for everybody, in case you haven't known his work, um, Craig is the artistic director of Consperare, which is a fantastic professional choir based in Austin, Texas. And Craig has uh, become really popular for doing what he calls collage concerts. And he marries styles 
effortlessly. He's a fantastic pianist. So he'll sit down and he'll go from somewhere over the rainbow into a Palestrina piece like it was supposed to be that way. Okay? Um, and likewise, this happens in considering Matthew Shepard. There's this eclectic blend of styles. In this piece, you sing a chorale in the middle of it, right? Who's the composer of the chorale? Who is that symbolic of? What composer, do you know? It's Bach, it's J.S. Bach. So in uh, the passion settings of Bach, there, there are moments where the choir, as the chorale, comments on the action and, and what's happening, okay? So here is the inclusion of a Bach chorale in the middle of it, all right? So now you can take on some more Baroque characteristics in your singing, okay? And um, change the style completely. We're out of music theater now, and now we're the Greek chorus, maybe doing something a little bit different. Can you, can you sing that? Can you start at the chorale moment? So I'm sure that Dr. We when Dr. Westerhouse conducts this, he will be in for, uh, as, as Ms. Rowley is doing. Okay, I want you to think beyond that. Remember side side from earlier? Okay, can you integrate that? She's still gonna be in for you sing in longer gestures. That's going to be a wonderful contrast to then, boom, which doesn't function in that same way. Okay, so you're, you're you're taking yourself out of the character of the piece. You're becoming something different. You're kind of commenting on, and then you jump back into character when it all builds up. Okay, um, I, I don't want to spend the entire time on this piece, uh, um, but I would just say that there are a lot of places in here where. There is punctuation, but not time to breathe. And the punctuation is important. If I were to just do a run-on sentence without punctuation, it would sound really, really weird. Okay? I, we need that pause, that moment, but it, it doesn't always have to be a breath. What could be the song? Where? I didn't breathe. Okay? So you can do the same thing. You can have that moment, and in that moment, it's really powerful, especially if you don't take that breath, because the audience, holds their breath with you. And it's, re it's really powerful for us. Okay, other pieces real quick. Um, I love the diversity of your programming. I love what you're doing. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the, the, the Celtic piece? Um, somebody want to tell us the meaning of it? Yes. Uh, yes. Here. Oh. Um, so this piece is basically like, uh, it's a, oh my gosh. Uh, it's talking about like my dashing darling and someone that like, passed away and kind of like mourning the loss of them and um, like all that they've done for you and they're like a hero, like my gallant hero is what Moya Lamar means. Great. All right, we got that. All right, so if I'm singing a piece and it's a lament for my gallant hero, here's my face. Um, so, I, I, mean, I, I want you to be physically involved, and I'm not making fun, believe me. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm asking you to do, because, you know, unless we speak Gaelic, we're not going to understand every single word. So we're going to rely on you to tell us the story, okay? And, and especially when you have those moments where the soloists come out, excellent job soloists, by the way. When they come out, um, and, and I know you did it for the hall uh, because it's, it's hard to hear out there, but I'd love for you to be able to find, when you ultimately perform this, find a way to connect with the soloist and hear their story, okay? Rather than the soloist walking out and telling their story, I want you to hear it and be part of that, okay? I'm, I'm giving you permission to be a little more introspective about it, 
Okay, um, and the um, the moments where you you are singing together, the the rhythm together. I think again, having more kind of drive to the downbeats would be good. Okay, just jam, jam, jam. Okay, and just having that you know kind of that motion forward. Don't stop. It's not it's not a stopping piece, but just feel that way. Um, and then the uh, the Arabic piece, such cool. Cool music. Um, what's this one about? Go for it. Oh. Um, well, this one's kind of like this desire because you're watching the person you love sway and dance, and you're just feeling very like moved by their dancing. Yes, great. All right. So, I mean, you can get pretty PG-13 pretty quickly in this piece, right? Okay. Um, and, you know, whatever you, whatever it means for you and whatever is going on in your mind in terms of the subtext, I think we can all agree that there is this person of profound beauty and you are awed by the beauty and you can't believe this person is hanging around you. Okay? And just feeling that, that sense of awe and that wonder. And there's something really, for lack of a better word, there's something sexy about the rhythm in this piece. Okay? And I don't think you have to shy away from that. Okay? You're in 10 8 for like the entire piece, right? 10 8, okay? And it's 3 plus 2, and then plus 2 plus 3. So, I mean, some, most of the time when we see 10 8, we're like 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. Da 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 this is da 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 Okay, and this, so there's this, ooh, ooh, it, kind of a swell in each of those bars, and I think you can do that dynamically. Let that happen, okay? Um, and then, as you get a little bit, you know, more comfortable with the language and, and get, get out of the music a bit more, I would just say, when you have that, um, the, the 16th note lines there, Everybody needs to have a, a, a goal, a destination in the peak of the phrase for that, so that it really sways there. You're almost the musical represent, not almost, you are the musical representation for the dance, okay? And we hear that. We hear the person dancing in the way you sing that music. I just threw a lot of really high level stuff at you because you're ready for it. You sang so beautifully. As you just keep working in, just think about these layers that you can, that you can add. And don't forget your role as storytellers. It's, I mean, it's kind of a cliched word to say, but that's really what we're doing here. That's, we have the text to connect with, and when that text is not in a language that is familiar to the audience, it's our job as the musicians to really put that forward. Great, great, great job. Can't wait to hear you moving forward. Excellent, thank you.